Baladesh Maladore. Greetings, travellers. I seem to be in the minority of Therians who, rather than going for a spiritual angle with their theory anthropy, tries to explain it in a more scientific manner. I have gone into my detail in my introduction video about how I think theory anthropy um, comes from uh, in the mind rather than anything spiritual, but in this video I want to talk more about how I feel there may be a nasty disdain for science over spiritual explanations and why I personally see more value in the scientific method rather than jumping into something akin to shamanism. But before I continue, I want to make clear that I respect everyone's right to believe whatever they choose. It just doesn't mean that those ideas must be immune to criticism to be respectful to them. Firstly, scepticism is not about ridicule and dismissing all supernatural explanations by people as wrong or stupid. Scepticism is simply asking questions like how to tell the different how do we tell the difference between dre lucid dreaming and astral travel what is a spirit anyway why would reincarnation be across species why do we almost why do you almost always get wars with other big predators um, with with a few exceptions these questions i feel are not adequately explained by shaman-esque beliefs Secondly, it's important to establish what scientific method actually is. To start with, we need to define what a theory actually is. The most popular definition seems to be a person who feels that they are in some, uh, some way or have a connection to a non-human animal. We experience shifts in behaviour and mental states, sometimes even feeling phantom limbs in replace or around our own. Now that we have that out of the way, let's examine what about human psychology we know to see if we can relate to uh, the ph existing phenomenon to theory anthropy. It is important to remember that humans are animals too, and we are all brought up with a particular concepts and stereotypes about how animal animals behave, including our closest rel uh, relatives, as well as the noises they make. We also all have triggers for any behaviour that we may feel. We may feel angry at someone promoting inequality, or feel sad at the death of a character in a movie, or a death of a loved one. So what, trigger, what are the triggers for mental shifts? What emotions do we go through when uh, we are in a mental shift? How consistent and strong must the stimulus be to feel a mental shift? I personally experience mental shifts most often in, extra, in uh, large amounts of heat or cold or when I get an adrenaline rush for excitement of some sort. Different parts of our brain control different responses and behaviours and our experience in life can greatly influence our thinking. So if we establish a control test with non therians and give them the same stimulus, how would their brain react in a different way to those who consider themselves therians behaviour wise? And how do we eliminate pareidolia and previously held biases from these experiments? This nicely leads on to the phenomenon of phantom limbs. Phantom limbs normally occur after a limb or organ has been amputated and the nerves still uh, think that there is a limb or organ there. Of course, this isn't the case for most therians, since we, most, of, most of us have our limbs still. But it's important to realise that, it's, uh, that our skin is covered in sensitive nerve cells that may react in a particular way to certain stimulants. And this is where the preconceived bias comes into the matter. How would the same bodily stimulus make a person who is not considered to be a therian feel? The power of suggestion is something that can easily be shown in many, case, many cases of supernatural events where an ambiguous uh, stimulus like EVP, electronic voice phenomenon, can appear in a certain way after a suggestion as to what it could have been made. And our, our brain can be trained to uh, react to stimulus too. In tests where a person is shown different shapes in response to different levels of pain applied to their skin will often end up feeling larger or less amounts of pain when the image has are changed so not to consistently relate to the amount of pain given. So when it comes to certain animal behaviours, perhaps we may very well relate the stimulus but ignore the differences more in our behaviours when compared to said animals. Even our very personalities could play a hand, as many of us feel into 
uh, fall rather into particular characteristic categories of personality which may affect how we react to certain stimulus. Keep in mind I am not suggesting on any level that theory anthropy is false or willingly made up but my point is that the human brain is a very complex thing and so we often make many different unconscious decisions and thinking patterns may result in us reaching certain conclusions about ourselves and think less, less critically about certain areas. I for one think that we should not be afraid of scientific research and w I apologise for that interruption. Now where was I? Yes, I, th I think that for one we should not be afraid of what science has to say about theory anthropy. Because to me, learning the ins and outs of the human mind and how many different factors may come together to cause me to relate myself to the world in many respects, rather than diminishing any majesty or thought about the world, actually adds more to the wonder with, uh, with more knowledge and control who we are as individual people. Until next time, Adiel Shalah, safe travels.